Right folks, I've just finished my work, my job load, and as usual, it's a totally awesome o'clock. There you can see five to two. I'm up at Finch Farm. I've come up and um, just having a throw out, basically. Just having a throw out, see if there's an outside chance of picking up one catfish of any size. I just fancied a bit of catfishing. The thing is with catfishing, you've really got a fancy doing it, you know? And up here, they've got some decent fish in here. But there's also a chance of smaller ones as well. So we've got a mishmash of baits. I've got bluey, half section of bluey. I'm on the flight path from Heathrow, guys. It's going to be noisy. They're coming, well, pretty well. I have to go like that when they go over. They're that low, so it will be noisy. I'm not using a big camera, that's why I've got the small camera, because this mic seems to cut out a lot of that, that noise up there. I've got a big giant cube of lunch meat out by the island, and I've got on the right-hand side a piece of, I can't tell you how many times it's been, it's, it's a manky piece of mackerel, and I've cut the back head off it, it's almost verging on the rotten. It's been in and out my freezer so many times it doesn't bear thinking about. I'm locked and loaded. Decent carp rods. One of the rods I actually bought from Mick here. It is, because he does second hand gear as well. A Sundridge 12 foot medium range carp, two and a quarter pound test curve. That's that one. This is something called a hyperloop, which is okay. It's like a licorice stick. I've had some good fish on it though. It's a sort of a lucky rod, that one. Now, all I've had, I've been here 10 minutes while I get sorted. I've definitely, definitely on this one, on the edge of those lilies, I've just stepped two paces away from the rods. Over there, there's some lilies. I'm just on the corner of the lilies. I've chucked some four mil pellets out with all the water that I diluted from thawing out the fish. And there's tiny little dimples showing on there. I think, I think Mick's actually reduced that um, reed bed, which is handy because I have caught carp that have gone through here and out the other side and down the lake. So there's some decent fish in here. I suppose they'd start a small one would be seven pounds, I guess. Five to seven pounds, probably a small one. Uh, lunch of meat, I've had like one tug on. This I'm freelining the chunk of mackerel because it's heavy enough just to rest on the bottom. The lunch of meat's got a treble A shot on it and a half section of bluey being quite light and narrow in body weight has um, a swan shot on it. It looks currently like a bomb site, so I'm going to tidy up here. I think I'm going to put my chair facing this way so I get some sunburn as well. No buzzer on the left hand rod. They're uh, Mike's buzzers and they need new batteries. So I'm using mine plus visual, so I'll be sitting right next to the rod. That is the bluey I'm using. I've just snipped the tail off. So you can see I've used about that size there of bluey. And they're very, very oily those. They are good. I like them sea fishing as well. It's something, bait I should use more often. I'm going to be having something to eat. What would I have? The usual cheese and pickle sandwiches. No, I think I'll try something a bit different. I just bought a flask of water because it's, the weather's due to change tomorrow. This is why I'm squeezing and rushing this four hour session and whatever I can get in here. Uh, just on the off chance I could catch something. Hey ho, you've got to be in it to win it. I'm actually, wait for this, going to have a cook up of bacon and eggs, or at least try to in this wind. The backrest you'll notice won't go in here. I haven't got one of those luxury uh, pods or whatever they call them, you stand your gear on. So I'm just using that. And there is the 6.45 to Dubai. It's gonna be a noisy one, people. I hope it's gonna be noisy with me whooping and hollering with the fish on the end. This little burner that Mike's got is uh, very good. He's got a couple and I steal both of them. Now this one's good because it keeps it quite low down, which is handy for being out the wind and stuff like that, if I can ever work out how to put it together. No idea on the mate, not selling them. It's got a sort of spring-loaded... How does that work? Leg system, that's it, that's it, that's it. Little spring-loaded leg system there that seems... If I can get it in... Is that in? That's it. Yeah, so this one, look, it lays down flat. It's not up high, so that's quite handy. And then you just screw in, let's give this a... This one is nearly empty. I was a bit slow there, guys, it was a bit slow. I've got a bit of cooking oil for the uh, virgin olive oil. I could have put a bit of that ground bait that I threw out, couldn't I? That would have got them going, a little bit oil on the surface. I'll use that sharp fishing, so it's not a problem. 
Right, real mishmash going in here, boys. I suppose I could have cut those out, couldn't I? Do they float? Wow. Hang on a minute. Will fish take mushrooms? Oh, jeez. Did you see that bite? That was a whack of a bite there. Could have been a liner. That's on the bluey. I'm putting the mushrooms on first, people. I feel the mushrooms are going to take a bit longer to cook. Look at the kite up there. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. He's already dived down and picked up, I think, a mushroom that was floating. Here he comes, he wants to come down, I'm not going to move. Why do I not have the big camera? Here he goes. Look, 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 look. Look how cool was that, people? How cool was that? About four or five foot wingspan. Britain's biggest bird, or I think it's England's biggest bird. So I think Scotland has a golden eagle. These boys are working along nicely. I think I might have the uh, fat a little bit hot. Hey ho, I'm going in. This is the time I don't need a bite. Really, I don't need a bite. Just had a single beep on the chunk of rotten mackerel. You know what, I think a rash of a bacon will cut the catfish. I think they'll take that as well. That would be some of the fish. That's really nice rash of bacon. Coming along nicely, folks. Coming along nicely. It's got to be done, folks. It's got to be done. Got to be done. No bites for the moment, please. No bites. Well, I'll take it, but I'll have to have a a cold lunch. Well, there's a lot of bubbling going on with those eggs there. And I'll tell you what, out there, there's some bubbling close in here. Now, I did was rinse my, uh, rinse my bucket out here, of all the juice, and then I just threw the, spray the juice out there, like you throw a bucket of water away, sprayed it across the surface. I'm hoping that might sink down and get any catfish noses twitching. Well, there we go, boys. Lunch is served. Ouch. Turn it off first, Graham, and leave some hair on my hands. Let's scoop all that on there. Bacon, eggs, mushrooms. And I've recently turned into a two-egg man, which I never thought I was. I've flipped the eggs, so I like my eggs over easy. And the final addition is, yes! Who goes fishing? with ketchup. Totally awesome dude, that's who. I think I've tried that as a bait additive, but it might be worth a go. Enjoy. Good stuff people, all good stuff. Well, while I was having that cook up, I got my reels on bait runner, just in case. For me, personally, not ideal for catfishing. I like that bobbing to go up, and then I want to nade them straight on the reels drag, full drag. And that's what I've gone back to now. So I've moved my chair in between my rods, and if they do go up, then I can, as soon as I just pick the rod up, and I hopefully will load up into a fish. I don't know, that's how I normally would fish here. It's fished quite a bit. A lot of catfish get caught, they get finicky, they're not as stupid as you think they are, and they're very touchy to excess weight. That's what they, uh, what they say. I had a big uh, bang, real jerking sort of bang on the left hand, on the bluey, and when I wound in to check it out, it had actually gone. So I was fishing with a bare hook, which is never good, is it? So, my eardrums are battling my way through the aircraft flight path and I've got my bobbins over there, I've recast them all, check the base, recast them all and hopefully I get a bit of action. It takes just one fish to turn it all around when you're catfishing. Got a fish on boys. I've no idea if there's any size to it or what it is. I don't think it's a big one. It's been ages getting out of the rushes. Can you see that down there? I got it down as a small fish. 
what the hell is that? Oh my god, it's a big eel. Oh, look at this eel. Holy cow, let's get this one in. I wonder why he got me snagged up so fast. A big, big eel. Oh, get in, get in, get in. That's one of the biggest. I think I've got him. I think I've got him. Oh, what? What a result. Hey, a nice big eel. That is a result. Look at that kitty. Look at that kitty. Oh my god. A freshwater eel. Can you guys see that? That's a big, big eel. He has got to be three feet long. That is one slimy, great big giant. It looks like a conger eel, and there's the kite up there. He thinks it's a fish as well. He has definitely toasted that, that bluey down his throat. Check this fish out. I don't know how I'm going to get this one to get a decent picture for you. Let's get this weed off it. <laughs> What's a big eel? This is a big eel. Look at the size. I'm hoping to keep him calm. Can you see this one, guys? Look at the size of this one. That is over three feet long, I'm guessing. An absolute cracker. Giant, giant eel. He's gonna wrap himself around me in a minute, like tentacles. He looks like something out of Captain Jack Sparrow. I actually thought, to be honest, it was a catfish. Look at the length of it. I actually thought it was a catfish, snagged me in the rushes, and I thought, that's it, I've got no chance. Oh dear, who's gonna explain this net to Mike? Well, all quiet on the Western Front, as the saying goes. I've uh, had a problem with one of uh, Mike's bite indicators, buzzers, batteries dead on it. So what I've done is rigged up my own one here. It consists of a luncheon meat tin, some stones, like that, and the reel on backwind. So when that goes up, so it's got a weight on it, so there's no problem with it. It's got to pull up because it's on a, on a weight. This hat, bail arm will revolve around here and that will knock this on the floor. And should I nod off or be not looking, then at least I've got a bite alarm there. Although it does seem a bit basic, I can assure you it works. We used to put an old penny or a coin on the lip here, open the bail arm, put the penny on the line, pinching it, put a tin tray on the bottom down there, and as the carp took line, it would flip, the coils would flip off, knock the coin, and we'd see that in the dark, because we had, I don't think torches were invented when I was uh, starting. So it definitely that was a way to go forward, and I can assure you that will work. I've also used Coca-Cola cans and beer cans on the end of piers tied around for shark fishing at night, and I've fished about 120 pounds, which is quite interesting when people walk down a pier in the dark over in the Florida Keys, <laughs> and they suddenly see this, this can of drink disappearing along and going into the water. It doesn't actually go into the water, it falls off. It goes clunk, 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 and then you know you've got to run. So soldiering on here as you do, and just sitting and chilling. It's going from really lovely sunshine to cloud, so it's going to change. The weather's on the change. I've got a feeling it might be the high pressure that's shutting the fish down. Two or three other guys just came round to see how I was fishing, and um, they're not doing too much either. A few carp, little ones on the top. Um, a goldfish, one was catching goldfish, roach, just small bits and pieces, but they're not going nuts, they're not going nuts, and I think it's the weather with the pressure, I think it's the high pressure. Oh, there's a... So, chopping and changing between baits, casting with different swims, and nothing really stands out yet. I'm getting sort of twitches on pretty much everything, lunch of meat and bluey being the top ones for twitchy bites. Well, I was pleased to catch that big eel, I can assure you, I've missed two catfish takes, I think they're catfish. I can't think what else would pull a bluey, a half section of bluey. Um, but they must be very small catfish, so one, I barely tightened to it, and there's one take in there now. There's one, just, they just tug at it, it's most peculiar, just a slight tug, just on here. Just tighten up a bit there. 
they are most peculiar takes today. And I had one, there was a real pull round, the, the tip was actually pulling and I tightened up to it. it. Didn't feel a thing. In fact, I lost the bait, hook pulled out the bait. So it doesn't look good on the catfish front, but I'm well pleased with that eel. And well, I'm just gonna tough it out and give it another 45 minutes. And then I think I will call it quits because you never know here, Finch, you never know what's gonna come. You know, you know they're in there, that's for sure, but because catfish are so peculiar for feeding, you just gotta sit it out and tough it out. Well, after the uh, big eel I had, I thought I'm gonna come and give it another go, but I was gonna do a bit of sea fishing, but it's just been so windy, it's been ridiculous. So that's knocked the uh, boat fishing on the head. So I'll come back, I've gone around the other side, this guy's fishing where I was fishing before, and you can see over here, not many anglers are having really, really busy yesterday. But it's all, uh, it's all looking good. I haven't seen any carp, small carp moving on the top. But anyhow, I've got my two cat rods out. And I'm gonna, with my third rod, just so people know you can use, buy different tickets and buy different licenses in the UK. I know some places, I think it was Canada, they only have well, one rod. I think it's a one rod rule in Canada. I can't remember when I was there. They've got so many fish, so you don't need more than one rod, that's for sure. Pretty sure it was. But check all regions everywhere, and uh, I take great relish in having my three rod license now, and I get a discount for an old age pensioner, 68. Does it go down when I'm 70? That'd be brilliant. All that money's gone into fishing, it'd be nice to get some back, wouldn't it? So anyhow, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be baiting up just down over there. Um, bait is really basic, really basic. It's just a try on to see if there's any small fish here. Because last time I see bubbling, ground bait mix, Bran and Bailey's horse feed, the usual mix of, I think they're four mil pellets, coarse feed pellets, and some tired looking weekend warriors. These have been around for a while. Red and white maggots, and I'm gonna see what, see if I can get a bite. I hate shotting floats, I absolutely hate shotting floats. I have a nightmare shotting my float up. I'm trying to fish with a really delicate one, because last time I fished over there, I noticed there's a lot of bubbles coming up, you know, just single ones. I weren't sure whether that, to be honest, whether they were catfish, but they tell me some bream in here, so I'm gonna give it a go and see what's in here. There's obviously plenty of fish in here because the catfish wouldn't be surviving otherwise. So who knows, am I gonna get lucky with a catfish? Great if I do, if not, I'm gonna be chucking some bait out and see if I can catch anything at all. Hopefully I don't get a strangling great eel on my match rod, because that definitely will be a one-way ticket. Right, let's get a bit of bait in. Now I've damped this down, literally a few hours before I left. I'm gonna make up some little pellets like this, if you call them pellets. Matchmen probably think they're hand grenades. So what pellets of ground bait. It might even attract the catfish. I'm very tempted when I baited this, I got it going to put my catfish rod just on the right hand corner there. Or one of the baits, you know, because these small fish activity, I'm gonna go, I did, throw a bit of loose feed over there a little bit farther but the problem is I can't I can't sink line I can't cast over there and sink the line I don't think I need to catapult just heave it all out there I'm not worried it goes in a wide area at the moment because what I'd like to do is start it in a wide area some maggots going here start it in a wide area Start in a wide area and then gradually narrow it down a little bit. I'd really start really narrow. It might take a while for the fish to find it. That's my theory anyway. If they're all over the place, they might nibble from the outside and start working their way and then you can concentrate it a bit more. You know, if I could only get this shot, float shotted, I'd be a happy bunny. Well, got my first fish on boys. And it is indeed a skimmer. Now that, look, now that is catfish sized you can see why they do well in here the cats can't you when you've got fish like this skimmers that's what I would call a one bite wonder especially being silver as well it's not a good that's not a good color to be in here is it it's strange because uh, I've never done anything but catfish in here I never even thought I think I did have a go carping around the margins once on the top I'd never I don't think put a float out here and seeing what there is else about. So it'll be quite, oh, there's a whack load of bubbles over there. My goodness me. That can't be, that's gotta be a carp or something. Might even be a catfish. I can't get to grips with shot in this float. Let me show it to you. 
it seemed to be a nightmare. It's either all the way under. I thought it would be a nice delicate one because I'm re relatively close. I've got it locked top and bottom. It says on here, put a name over it because I don't get any free ones. Th an antenna, 2BB. So I figured I could get it down to maybe there. But it just seems to hold there. I mean, you know, I just had a fish on it, can't grumble, but I've got 2BB and it says it takes 2BB and yet I've got another smaller shot there. And I've got to admit, I hate, hate shotting floats. The worst one, I hate it. This wind's a nightmare because the float's so light, I've got to cast up into the wind a little bit, then try and tweak it back without getting it out of position. See, it's, it's sticking up like this much. I don't need that much. My eyes are bad, but they're not that bad. However, those are delicate floats. And then all I'm doing, I've got, I've got a little lightweight elastic, thin elastic, dozen maggots, pinging out all over the place where I can't cast to, because this wind is just sort of rocketing around all over the place here. I'm trying to bait slightly left. Over there. Now I need to put my bait. I've got to replumb this. I'm not happy with this float at all. See, what it is, is it's just too light in the body. If I had a following wind, I'd be okay. It just will not cast into the wind at all. I think I might actually be better holding this. Though it doesn't look as though there's any wind drift going across here. If I can't sink the line, it pushes a belly into the line between the rod top and the float, and that will gradually drag the float along out of position. There's a the fish. That's not a skimmer, I don't think, is it? It is indeed a skimmer. Skimmers are really like a small bream there, you can see that. Get very slow drops on it. There he goes. Got him. I've got that one. And of course, listen, all this splashing around like this, it's got to attract the catfish, isn't it? Got to attract them. I always tell kids, get your little plastic discorder, it's so easy to get hooks out. It's not that they're swallowing it, it's just that it's a very, very small hook for me to be able to uh, get out. Just had a bite on this one, guys, on the catfish. Just had a little tug up, definitely, definitely. Definitely had a pull up on this one. And that's a half a bluey section, a small mini bluey cast over there. Not a very big piece because I don't want a big catfish. Well, I do, don't we? All anglers want a big one, but it just goes around the island, you lose them, it's pointless. You need to catch them in this big area here, sort of local. So it's a definite take. I'd like to get about that much float tip showing. Now, this is just too far, but of course, being as it's not a wide diameter, it's an antenna thin one. It will slide down, it will register the bite very well, and the fish won't feel the resistance of the float. That's the idea of me using it, but it's not good for casting into any airflow which is coming this way. All from up here, loads of rain clouds around here. I'm just not in the right spot where I chuck the bait. Oh, that was a bit more like it, as it is. Yeah. Well, boys, I'm getting fish off the fish here now. I mean, I'm getting a fish a chuck. Absolutely a fisher throw. My well, boys, I'm getting fish off the fish here now. I mean, I'm getting a fisher chuck. Absolutely a fisher throw. Get myself organised with this uh, setup in a minute. No bigger bream, but nevertheless, it is entertaining fishing. I'm even going to try and catch one on the same chewed maggot. I'm just about getting the getting the feel of this float now. I'm way over the distance. 
<coughs> you won't see the float there. I might actually put another camera up and uh, I can zoom in. There's a float, there's a, there's a bike going to the left. There you go. That's probably a rud or something. Just took it on the way down, he came off. So the wind isn't really a bother for the catfish, I don't think, unless it's a pressure change, an air pressure change, but it is for dragging the float out of position. It's really quite frustrating, annoying, but I am getting fish. Fish after fish after fish. My goodness me. No wonder there is such a good, strong head of catfish in here. Because that is just bite-sized. Lovely. Be nice to get a bigger bream. Planes, dogs, we've got it all going on here. Barking. Well, I did get caught in a bit of rain. And that made me bait up closer in, just literally under my rod top here. And I'm still here. I'm still getting the skimmers. I must have had 15 or 20, I think. So they are all over here. No catfish as yet, though. A bunch of maggots. And I, <coughs> I changed to a loaded waggler float, which is much easier for casting. I've got a, is that a fish there. I've got to tune it down a bit. And I'm getting some of the float bumps on the sideways, which tell me there's probably rud or roach there that are hitting the maggot on the way down. I just need to shot that float down a little bit more because this one's wider, it's not an antenna float, it's a waggler, so it's fatter if you like. So it takes a bit more resistance to pull it right under. A big fish will take it under, but the smaller, more delicate feeds like roach, perhaps rud, they might have trouble with it. Well, I'm trying to fish both out there and I'm feeding an inside line here and I'm starting to get very, very slightly bigger fish on the inside line. That's, that's oh, just about a swing of that one. There he comes. So really making no difference whether they feed out there or close in. And obviously, you can see that one, nice skimmer. Behaving yourself and not slapping me in the face. Must have had 50, 60 fish now. I'm fishing three maggots hooked by the head. The head is a thin end. And that way, I'll show you one second. Let's get three. Three whites seems to be doing the damage. This left hand of mine's had a battery. This means the thumb's gone. That's been uh, smashed with a hammer. Cut out the top there. Anyway, what I've done, it's got three maggots hooked by the thin end. If I did it by the fat end, which I normally do, to be honest, because it's stronger, it tends to mask it. It can all twist and gob up around that uh, bend. So I've been doing it that way, and it seems to be doing the business. Now, I'm going to try it, fish the inside line here. Literally just under the rod top. Don't even think, don't think I need to, 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 to feed much, really. I might even get the other camera. I'll put an extra shot on there, a very small shot. Just trying to take it down, but I think there's rud and roach hitting it on the way down, stopping that float cock properly. And a lot of the time, when I'm slightly over depth, it will go off to one side or the other, and that's always a sign of a bite as well. It doesn't necessarily have to sort of flash right under. The chap over there's got about one, two, three, four, he's got five rods out between two of them, who is his son. And I don't think they've had a fish yet. I haven't seen a fish in the last. What is it? Nearly three hours. Got a diving duck's gone down there, so that'd be some fun when I hook him, wouldn't it? He's staying under for a huge time and he's stirring it all up, unfortunately. I mean, maybe, my goodness me, he really is down, unless he's been eaten by a catfish. There he is. Really annoying diving duck. Messing my swim up. Go. Cool. Oh, boys, I just missed a catfish on this one, struck. Must be coming towards me. Felt nothing. Great big swirl, big boil, but I've got a decent fish on now. Do you know what? I just pulled my float in here and just let it sit there for a second. So I think I'm going to bait up close in. It is, in fact, a better bream this time. This requires something called the bream net. Here he comes. 
hope he doesn't fall off. That was on Red Magus, and I wasn't getting any takes on Red Magus to start with. And he's it. There we go. Everything comes to he who waits. And I have waited, I have to say. That's a proper bream. Yeah. Pleased with that guy. Back he can go. Well done, Graham. Oh, I'm really, really covered in it. Well, you guys know what it's like. Yes, it's lovely stuff. That and eel slime. I think I got the T-shirt for both. Look at it. Oh. Yeah, all we need is a nice catfish, about six or eight pounds, and that to finish off with, that would be nice. I'm going to put some more bait down there, because maybe it would be a lot easier for me fishing close in here. I have to say, get it really, really close in, and then I should be pretty accurate. Truth is, I can't remember where I hooked that bream, I just wound in down there somewhere. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. There he goes. Ooh. A pair of lips came back then, Graham. We're well, getting later in the afternoon, so I've overwetted the ground bait here, because I'm now going to be... Oh, going to be missing bites. <laughs> Got a laugh, haven't you? Let's put it back in position. Uh, how about this? I think... I'm trying to think outside the box. The bulk of these fish that I'm catching about from there to here, so I'm going to alter the size of my bait here, which is a very small segment of bluey, just a small segment. Take it off, use a nice big half segment there, right? These are salmon hooks here, barbless salmon hooks. Ah, oh, drip blood all over your trousers. And then, Here's the theory. Pack a bit of ground bait around it, and in it, the small fish will come around that, nibbling the ground bait, and that will help, in theory, bring a catfish around as well for that activity. So there. Look at that, boys. Have you ever seen that before? A dead bait covered in ground bait. Think outside the box. I'm going to go a little bit farther out there. Sink the line. This is bobbing goes on. Volume goes down. Just got the tension there. And do the same on the other rod, I feel. Put the other half of that segment on there. See it? I'm using just real small pieces there, very small pieces. Don't exactly fancy a whole one, but... You know, that's not far off the size of the um, skim of ream I've been catching. Just a few grains, just a theory, you never know. And put it right on that corner. Hopefully. Let that sink. On another bream, boys. On another bream. And I've just had a racing, screaming take on that that came to nothing. On the catfish rod. And that's on that ground bait covered uh, bluey. That's close in now. So I'll just concentrate on that for the last... Uh, couple of hours and just fish close in here because at least I can I can do it accurately. Here we go. So decent fish now, not the skimmers, decent bream. That's good. A couple more would be nice as well to finish the day. Well catfish would be as well, wouldn't it? Catfish would be nice. Let's not be let's not be too excited. Now I've got rid of the antenna float. That's about there. I've got this one, this one. This is called a loaded peacock straight. Just a straight stem. Tiny little shot either side just to bring it down because I want it down to about there. 
and then I have been fishing four maggots but the last couple of fish I bumped off were better and it seems like two whites did the damage two to three not the four Oh, you guys can see that reel in there. So I put one up the shank of the hook now. That leaves one covering the hook and two wriggling. As I say, you just got to keep adapting, changing, changing. It's what all fishing's about. Obviously, when it's good, it's good. You can catch on pretty much. You can catch on pretty much anything, but it does pay. See, there's some bubbles coming up down there, really close in, boys. These are my pellets. Just throwing these. I'm going to th throw them in by hand because I just got a feeling that's two decent sized bream I've caught on the close in here and about 50 skimmers out the back there. So I'm just going to concentrate really, really under my rod top here. Well, I've had about another, oh, I can't tell you, 20 skimmers. So I feel it's time to have something to eat now. If I've got enough gas left in there. I've got spag bottle in there, spaghetti bolognese. Well, most of it seems to have splashed up, but hopefully there's enough gas. It's a nearly empty bottle. I've got a spare anyway. And by having this on, I might even get a catfish take. Clouds are gone. Beautiful evening. Cool. And they did say it's going to get cold. I've got my float just literally down there. And... I've got to watch I don't get any in there actually. Nothing has happened. A couple of good tugs on this one. One good tug on that one. Very quiet. I haven't seen one catfish caught. But I've had a good day. Well, day afternoon. Uh, I've now got up a hook size of about a 12. 12 barbers. I uh, keep bouncing between white maggots and. Uh, Bunches and putting bunches on trying to get a slightly bigger bream, but it doesn't seem to be working. The plaster that's hanging there is from when I thought I'd take the top off my finger, getting it trapped um, between a wrecking bar and a piece of wood, which was most pleasant. I nearly blacked out, so the top's off my finger a bit, but still. Hopefully, it doesn't drop into the uh, spag bowl. My goodness, that's heated up already. Turn that down a bit. Look at this. Plates. That's where I put the plates over the maggots. You can't beat a good bit of bacteria. That can come off, I think, now. That. I don't want it blowing out. And it's not going to blow out. Very quiet on the inside, and I, I really can't, I, I can't fathom out why. I've replumbed the depth, so I'm absolutely what they call almost dead depth, so the bait is just touching uh, the lake bed. One catfish, about, I'm on, I'm on to camera, I'm on to camera, watch this. It's going to go, that's it, it's flicking straight in the spag bowl. Spag bowl and skimmer bream, you can't beat it. How funny would that be if it dropped in that pot down there? Fish and spag bowl. Watch that doesn't boil too much. Yeah, so you can have some good fun with this float fish, you know, you're amusing yourself. You can always just have a catfish rod out or a carp rod out and then just mess around in the margins with a float rod and very often you will get carp in the margins. Bonus fishing, different way, different te techniques. That's me, but it just went again. I just saw the line, the line tweak up here where it joins the water. It just goes in there. You can actually see that pull before the, uh, and it floats away. Come back here. I think there's a good fish down there. Then. He's still there. I can see that line still tweaking. Right, boys. I think we're done with this bag bowl. You can't be a good cook-up out in the open.
And there we go. Food fit for a king. Well, getting near the end of the day, boys. Planes are coming over one after the other, and another netable green there. So I think it's time to call it quits and go home. So decent sized bream, can't grab all, no catfish. Gives me a chance to uh, have an excuse to come back again. <laughs>